So I am your program director and Penny, uh, who you also can probably see, Penny Zhang is our program manager, our finance program manager. And so we answer a lot of your questions. So one of the things we want to do today is talk a little bit about uh, enrollment um, and answer whatever questions you have. If you have questions, you can either raise your hand or you can type them in the chat so I can see those as well. Uh, but just to kind of give you a sense of, of what it is uh, you should be thinking about as you get ready to enroll for classes. So without further ado. So a couple of things as you prepare to register. The, one of the big things you need to do is you should really make sure you're looking at the academic calendar. So you know things, uh, and I know Dean Powell talked about this, when can you start registering? When is the schedule released? These are generally put out um, for every long semester and summers, and they're right off of the main homepage for UTD. Penny, do you want to put the link in the chat for them? Awesome, thank you. So, and I'm going to go ahead and pull this up so we can see. So, I'll probably just pull us up to an old academic calendar. So, this is this is, happens to be for spring. But if I was to go down here and scroll, I can look at summer 2024 or for fall, and it'll go out here and it'll pull up some information. So these things are stuff like, when do my classes start? When do my classes end? What do I need to do for graduation? So pretty much all the dates you would be interested in tend to be here on the first page, including days the university is not open. Um, and then the payment schedule is on the second page. But it's a very useful thing um, for that. And we'll talk about professional development here in, in just a moment. So that's the first thing. The second thing is in Galaxy and Orion, when you go in there, you'll see um, an enrollment date. It's on the right-hand side. And you won't be able to enroll until that date happens. So you may see that some students are starting to enroll. Those are probably current students. Uh, they get to go in and start selecting classes. Um, advising um, helps with registration and new students. So they have a whole section that talks about some of these items. And then the third thing is you can research your courses in Course Lookup. So I'm going to go to Course Lookup here for a moment. This is what it looks like. And you can get there from actually any of the main pages. So even here, I can go off the main UTD page and I can go to course book and it'll help me pull that up. But I can look, for example, for finance classes. And I'm going to restrict this to graduate for fall. And I can see a little bit about the schedule. What I can't see and I don't know really is I can't see the syllabus, it's not there yet, and I can't see anything about the instructor. But if I were to go back to say last fall, for example, now if I go into class detail, you can see the syllabus is there so I can get a sense of what it covers. Uh, I can find the evaluation here as well. So um, there's a lot of different things that you can pull up from course book. So that's, it's, it's a great tool. So when you're looking at registering for classes and getting ready, when can you enroll? How do you enroll? Um, and, and then the information on course, course lookup. And, and I didn't click this. I think this just takes you to advising where they talk about course registration. And advising has a lot of stuff on that part as well. So you will be under the graduate catalog, and you have to follow those rules in order to graduate. If you are fall 20, if you're a summer 24 start, so you're taking classes, first semester is in, you know, start in May, you would be under the fall 2023 graduate catalog. If you um, are starting in the fall, you'll be under the fall 2024 graduate catalog. So there's not a lot of change between the two catalogs. Uh, but just realize that it is a different catalog and the degree requirements may be slightly different, but you have to meet those degree requirements in order to graduate. It's a, a very specific. So again, if I click on this, I can go to the graduate catalog. 
and I can actually just search graduate catalog if I need to. But you can look by courses. They'll give you course information. You can look by um, Jindal School. And here's our finance degree. You got to scroll a little bit, but you can see these are the different prerequisites and course requirements to graduate and the tracks. And so it's in the graduate catalog for that piece. So a couple of things, you have to meet those degree requirements to graduate. The um, One of the requirements is that you must have a 3.0 average uh, GPA in your core classes, and there are six core classes, and a 3.0 average GPA overall. That overall GPA, I mean, it is, it's an average. So if you were to get a B plus in one class and a B minus in another, it average out to a B. So, uh, so the enrollment date is, is Penny's got some information about the enrollment dates in the chat. It looks like most new students enrollment date is going to be April 4th. Um, the fall 2024, I'm not sure they've started enrolling for fall yet. I think they're doing summer, but Penny, can you check the catalog, the uh, calendar? I think, say? For, I think for summer should be April 1st or probably last week, uh, late okay. March. Yeah. But for fall, for new incoming, I think, yeah, it should be April 4th. Yeah, yeah, I think that sounds about right. Because I know they do them back to back. I just can never remember when they exactly out, you know, start those up. Uh, so question in the chat, chat, what are the compulsory classes to be taken in order to get an internship next summer? So the big thing you need to do is you need, if you're on a visa, you'll need to complete two long semesters. So that it would be fall uh, and spring, and then you would be eligible for the internship next summer. If you start in the summer, it's still going to be fall and spring. It's not a question of which classes, it's a question of time, um, at least as far as I know. Now, we did have a question about the program prerequisites. There are three of them. Um, one of them is MAS 6102. It's a professional development class that you take in your first semester. Most students do need that class. If you think you qualify for a waiver, advising actually has a form that talks about how you can get a waiver for MAS 6102. But it's generally work experience in the US or that you took undergraduate uh, degree here in the US. Uh, but that's that's a class that most students take in their first semester. It helps you prepare for OPT and CPT if you're international. It helps you with your LinkedIn and your resume and the job markets here. The other two program prerequisites are calculus and statistics. So those waivers are based on your transcript review. So we look to see if you have calculus, statistics, econometrics, ideally with a B or better, and if you do, and we find it on your transcript, then um, what we'll do is we'll waive them in the system. One of the pain points we have is we can't always identify them, but none of these prerequisites are part of the 36 credit hours. And if you need calculus or statistics, you would take it in your first semester. Um, so I think uh, Sayali Penny put the link uh, for the waiver form it is just right above your question. So it's, you can yeah. click on that and, and then you'll show you where that form is. And then I have a question. Let's see. Uh, it looks like, Saren, you want to go ahead? You're, you're muted, so you need to unmute. Um, can you hear me, ma'am? Yeah, I can. Yeah, ma'am, if you remember, I was one of those guys who had lots of questions regarding funding, right? So in one of the webinars now, ma'am, actually I've got uh, the scholarship now. So what am I supposed to do now from going forward? So the scholarship, yeah, the scholarship, you can go ahead and enroll. The scholarship processing, um, I don't know where they are in terms of, of that, but they report that information. I believe it's to the registrar and the bursar's office. Uh, and then they make the adjustment to the tuition accordingly. Yeah, actually they were saying that uh, the deadline is April 7th of accepting it. So I've already accepted it. I got some excellence scholarship. Uh, they have considered me as an in-state student. So it has uh, become the fees has gone down by 50%. Yeah, so, yeah, that's. 
that's how that works. And the question in the chat, can we apply it? Where can we apply for scholarships? I'll go ahead. I was going to talk about that in just a bit, but I'll have Penny I will put, go ahead and put the link in there for yeah. me. Thank you, Penny. Yeah. And uh, someone. Uh, yeah. Can I ask the uh, next questions? Uh, sure. Yeah, and the next question that uh, I have is, uh, ma'am, uh, means uh, when are we supposed to do start, ma'am? Suppose should I start in fall or should I start in summer, ma'am? Don't start the right thing for? If you have a scholarship, I would not start until summer. I would not start until fall. I'm sorry. Because okay. the, the scholarship is based on starting in the fall. If you start in the summer, yeah. you'll probably nullify your scholarship. Okay, yeah, it, it, it says that if you register, I have some credits before that. Okay, ma'am, journal. Secondly, ma'am, I had received a mail uh, yesterday or today. I don't know that they are told that uh, your calculus and stats have been waived. And then there is an accounting course of which there are one is financial accounting, then another is the intermediate accounting, and third is the financial plus managerial accounting. Then there was other core finance uh, subject, and then there was one elective and all. So ma'am, what yeah, I was it, thinking is that all these things, ma'am, suppose registration and all uh, and transcripts, can't we come there and sit with an advisor or some person and then uh, do these things? Means? Is that possible or we have to enroll everything online before we land there? Is it so like that? I would advise, so a couple of things. I know I got a couple of questions here. I'm going to talk about the classes in just a moment and the classes you need to sign up for. Um, can you wait and enroll once you get here? Yes, but your class choices would be much smaller because if the class is full, class is full. You get to pick up what's left. So it is to your best advantage to go ahead and enroll uh, if you can online. Even if you go talk to an advisor, they're going to advise you what to enroll online. So um, I'll talk about the classes and how you can choose between them in terms of making your decisions about enrollment here in just a moment. Okay, okay. Yeah. And uh, suppose I want to, even if it has been weird, but I just want to Let still attend Calculus Plus Stats class just to have a nice head start and burnish myself. So is that possible? Even if it has been weird. If it's been waived, you can take them. Just realize it's part, not part of your degree requirements. Now, let me get another question here. Um, I think Myra has also got a question. So let me grab Myra. Good morning. I know you mentioned you were going to discuss the classes. I so I'm not sure if this is what you'll discuss, but is there um, some template or somewhere on Orion that maybe tells us if classes are only offered during certain semesters of the year or are classes offered throughout the whole year? Yeah, I'm going to talk about that in just a moment. OK, actually, so that that's absolutely coming up. So let's talk about the courses because that's what inquiring minds want to know. Just as a brief refresher, your 36 credit hours, you've got your uh, core classes, the accounting class, finance 6301 and 6307. We generally want you to take those as early as you can because they're prerequisites for everything else, which means even if you take the calculus and statistics or something like that, you still want to try to get into those classes as early as you can, because if you don't, then you're prevented from getting into some of the other classes. The other three classes are an analytics class, a modeling class, and a derivatives class. That's this, this bottom set of classes here. While you want to take these as early as possible, you can spread these out. So don't feel like you need to take this the first semester and these the second semester. That's probably not a good plan. And then you have electives. You need 12 credit hours with a prefix of fin or real. And then six credit hours can be FIN, real, or any of these other areas. And actually, we will let you do accounting 6202 under some circumstances. So just realize that you can do all 18 hours in, in FIN, but you do have some options for other electives. So, and then just again, the tracks. Um, the information on the tracks is in the graduate catalog, but they're not on the diploma or transcript. They're just recommendations for career paths. So with that in mind, they're financial analysts, which helps prepare for CFA, corporate fin investment banking, real estate, fintech, and financial management. So I'm going to let Penny answer the chat. 
Uh, but again, the graduate catalog has the details. The web page has have the details. Uh, because if you're trying to enroll for your first semester, I want to focus on what you want to do now. If you're starting in the summer or you're part time for fall 2024, you will want to focus on two classes, an accounting class or FIN 60 and FIN 6301. So the accounting classes, you have three choices. One is accounting 6305, which is accounting for managers. It is a combination of financial and managerial accounting. For people who are coming from a non-accounting background, you've never done accounting ever, that's usually a nice choice because it gives you some of the financial accounting and some of the managerial accounting, and you get exposed to both of those sides. The accounting 6301 is introduction to financial accounting. So if you wanted to just focus on one part of accounting, we use financial accounting a bit more in finance than managerial. That's a reasonable choice. If you have an accounting background and you want to you know, stretch yourself a little bit, then you can look at accounting 6330, which is intermediate financial accounting. It actually has no prerequisites, oddly enough, but it, you have a choice. It's really completely up to you which one you do. Uh, but you want to take your accounting and your finance. If you're full time in fall and that's when you're starting, you're going to take at least three classes. Some people will take four. Uh, and again, you'll have that accounting choice and they will have finance 6301, which is financial management and finance 6307, which is mathematical methods, which is a finance and um, statistics hybrid class. It uses CFA level one and two materials. Now, if you have program prerequisites, particularly MAS uh, 6102 would be on top of that. And if you have waivers or transfers that can change what classes you're taking in any given semester. So waivers and transfers, the form is on the advising web page. It's the same, same page that Penny had up there originally. Waivers are for undergraduate work. So if you were an undergraduate finance student, you may be able to substitute uh, a course for a higher level, uh, higher level course for something you've already done. So, for example, if I was a finance major, I took business finance and advanced corporate finance. Maybe I don't want to take financial management 6301 because I've already feel like I've done that. Uh, we don't require a business degree. So in that case, you could request a waiver, a waiver doesn't really reduce your credit hours. It just lets you change what you're taking. So it's still 36 credit hours. It's just you get to take a little bit different mix of classes. For transfer work, it has to be graduate level work. So we'll accept up to nine credit hours of graduate transfer work. Uh, it does reduce the number of hours. Grades must be a B or better uh, for those transfers to, to happen. And there's some other requirements about that. Uh, but I know Penny's taking care of some of the stuff in the chat. So there's some information about a WhatsApp link that's going to be sent out shortly, uh, probably within the next week. Um, and then uh, and we generally get some of our um, student ambassadors to also participate in that to answer questions. So just as a visa restriction requirement, if you start in the summer 2024 and you are on a visa, and I don't know that there are many of you, but if there are any of you, because it's your first semester, you would need to have at least one face-to-face -face class. Uh, if you're starting in the fall of 2024 and you're taking only nine credit hours, you can only have one online class. So you could do one online and two face-to-face. -face. I think if you take 12 credit hours and to pick up an extra class, it couldn't be online, but uh, out of the, to be considered full-time for the, um, for visa purposes, you can only have one online class. So what is the maximum credit hours we can take in the first semester? I believe it's 18, though I would not recommend that. Um, usually they'll cap you out at 12. What do I mean by that? You'll only be able to sign up for 12 credit hours initially. You would not be able to add additional credit hours until either drop in ads or you have permission from graduate advising. And the reason for that is to make sure students aren't signing up for a bunch of classes and then dropping them at the last minute. And it, it helps with our enrollment. And it's three credit hours per subject. So, and I can go back here. I wanna show you something, cause this is relevant. So if you look at this class, 
the, the first number six tells you it's a master's class. Second number three tells you the credit hours. And then the rest is just the ending numbers. So this one is a graduate level class, but it's only one credit hour. So that's how you can kind of tell. Uh, so another question in the chat, um, is it advisable to complete in 12 months or 24 months? Is it possible to do in 12 months? It, it is, you would do four, four, two, start, assuming you started in the fall, you would do four classes plus professional development in the fall, four classes, now that would leave you short. I think you'd have to do five, five, and two. Five classes in the fall plus professional development, five in the spring, and then two in the summer. It's a busy schedule. Um, your pain point will be that you probably won't be able to get all the electives that you want. And you would have some issues in terms of getting your core courses knocked out, but it can be done. Um, it's a little easier if you do, I mean, you can easily do it in 18 months because then it's just four courses every long semester for fall, spring, and then the following fall. Um, and so, yeah, if you want more than 12 credits, my understanding is you just need to contact graduate advising because the system won't let you in there. So when you go to enroll, you want to pick your accounting class. I, I put 6301 or 6305 because that's what most students take, but you pick it first. Then you pick the finance section, then finance 6307. And you need to kind of chain them because you need the accounting for the FIN. You need the FIN 01 for 07. Um, and again, the, the advising registration link is down there. Total credits required are 36 credit hours. That does not include the program prerequisites. And by the way, out of those 36 credit hours, once you get further along, one of those could be, uh, one of those three credit hour blocks can be an internship. So one of the drawbacks of finishing in 12 months is that you really only get one shot for an internship, which would be uh, summer. So the, you've got an online section of accounting for managers. You've got an in-face section of accounting 6301 face-to-face. Uh, -face, and then you've got finance 6301 online for summer. I don't know why this says summer 2023. It should be summer 2024 because that's what it is. And then we've got the regulation of business and markets, uh, which is online. So you can see there's not a lot of face-to-face -face classes in the summer. So for those of you that are doing fall and starting in fall, just realize that the summer choices are a little bit thin. You don't have a lot of choice. Um, can you complete in three semesters? Again, if you're trying to complete by summer of 2025, you would have to take probably five in the fall, five in the spring, and two in the summer, unless you wanted to do five, four, two. I mean, it's basically 12 classes, so it's whenever you can get them done. In the first semester, you can select more than three subjects. I'm picking the minimum enrollment that you can have. So, and Penny and I generally advise on the course selection, but I will tell you, every single one of you, this is what you want. You want at least these. If you wanna take an additional elective, I'm gonna talk about that in just a second. Because if you don't take these, particularly if you don't take Finance 6301 or get that as early as possible, there won't be anything for you to take because it's a prerequisite for virtually every other course in finance. So I can't stress enough, your goal is to get in finance 6301, wave it, take it, transfer it, but you need that course. You can also take again up to six credits. So a lot of times if you're taking classes in summer, you'll probably pick up something outside of FIN. For fall, we have three sections of finance 6301, two sections of 6307, both of these have an online option available. A number of sections of the different accounting classes, 6301 accounting is online, but the other ones are not. And there's a ton of professional in, in advisors. So we don't automatically register you for classes because there's three different sections of financial management, including one online. We don't know which one you want. So if I put you in an online class and you go, no, 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 then you have to switch. So we let you pick and you can pick your, your faculty. So you still get to pick. For different tracks, the tracks are recommendations for career paths. So if you don't stay within your track, that's fine. The only requirement is four classes with a prefix of FIN or REAL for electives. The other two can be FIN, REAL, or from one of the other areas. 
And so you can see there's a couple of different finance electives. You can see your choice of finance electives as a new student is still also very thin. So for example, you can easily do regulation, real estate, but the FinTech class you only can get access to if you're enrolled in Finance 6307. So there's prerequisites for a number of these. So realize that you're gonna have to be thoughtful about picking up an additional class. And Penny and I can assist you with that if you do decide you want to do that. Normally tracks are chosen in the second semester unless you're picking up additional credit hours in the fall, in which case you'll have to decide actually now. So let me see if there's questions about course selection before we, um, yeah, you have to pick between accounting 6305 and 6301. You get to choose. Like I said, accounting 6305 is accounting for managers. It has financial and managerial accounting in it. Best if you, you know, if you have never done accounting, you have no idea what it is, then at least you get exposure to both sides. If you've done some accounting before or you, you just want to focus on financial accounting because it's the one we use the most, then accounting 6301 is fine. If you think, oh, I should do 6305, but I got 6301, it doesn't really matter. Both of them are fine and serve the function that we need. We just need you to have some accounting knowledge um, to help with finance 6301. How do you know if you're sticking to the right track? The track is determined by you based on your career goals. And I believe the deadline for enrolling into classes is like, um, I think the last day to enroll, Penny will look up the date and put it in there, but what happens is you'll get a date and they'll enroll past the last day to register. So the last day to register is what Penny's going to put in there. But if you enroll after that, they charge you a fee. Yeah, so if you enroll after August 15th, it's a fee. Can we take all the core courses in the first semester? You mean six core in the first semester and six in the subsequent semesters? Say, Ali, can you please clarify them? And the quant finance specialization is the FinTech. So it is there. And yes, every semester you get advice. We're going to be doing that with the continuing students when we get through with you guys today. So yes. All right. We'll talk a little bit. Um, let me talk a little bit about holds. Holds are, are lifted temporarily to help you enroll. If you don't enroll within a window, they'll put them back, actually. So if you find that happens, you'll probably have to email JSOM Grad Advising to help you, because even though Penny and I can tell you which classes we recommend, we can't actually enroll you in a class. We don't have the ability to do that. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, some of the holds are for your documents. You can bring them with you, but you need to make sure you get those documents settled. Some are for TB tests. Those are typically done in the U.S. Um, inter international orientation is something that if you're on a visa, you should you should do. You need to report information to ISSO. And so all of those are things that you you want to to think about. Um, so one of the questions is, can we cover all the core courses and then register for electives? So one of the things you don't want to do, the first semester you'll take core, predominantly core. Second semester, you want to start spreading it out. There are certain core classes you do not want to take together because it will make a very miserable semester for you. So, and we help with that. And the students that are here, you'll get to hear that information. The TB test can be arranged and done on campus. So that's a question. And you can talk one-on-one -on -one for enrollment um, for that. And the WhatsApp group is for everybody. So those are all new students. So it's a great point about who to ask. So Penny and I can help you with your courses. We can help you with your degree. We can help you with your tracks. We can answer professional questions about the CFA and competitions. If you say, can you please enroll me in class X? I'm going to send you to JSOM grad advising. I cannot enroll you. Penny cannot enroll you. We don't handle the waiver forms, the, the transfer forms. All of those things go to advising. Um, if you ask me about financial aid, no idea. Scholarships, don't do them. Tuition, it's Bursar's office. What we do is we look up the information on the web pages, just like you would. And so we will send you to those folks to help you. 
Penny and I don't touch visa questions. <laughs> we send you right to ISSO. Um, and if you have I-20 application questions, there is an ICOMET portal. So I can tell you what I know about CPT. So there's a question in the chat, tell, share about OPT. Here's what I know about OPT, it exists. It is after you graduate, no idea outside of that. That's ISSO. CPT, you have to complete two long semesters at UTD before you can complete, uh, you can start your CPT. Uh, there's a process that you do through um, uh, the Career Management Center and you apply for it through Galaxy Orion. Uh, it's part of the training that happens in MAS 6102. I believe they talk about that part. You do not pay before you enroll. I'm not sure how that would work because they don't know how much to charge you. Um, can you join classes after your August CFA level two exam? You generally want to start classes by the first day of class, no later, but I would encourage you to get here a little early if you can. Um, so there's that. The other thing is, and this is a very important point, please use your UTD email because that is the official communication channel for UTD. So you'll get that message from us starting now. Actually, if you email us, please do that. So the question about scholarships, I know Penny put the link to the scholarships in uh, before, but it's Dean's Excellence. You do have to apply. And they're only awarded in the fall for continuing students, um, but you're not continuing students, you're new students. So you need to complete um, a minimum of 12 credit hours by the end of spring. So it's not by the start of spring, by the end of spring as a continuing student. So just remember you have to apply for scholarships every single year um, that you're here. So you apply for this fall as a new incoming student, you'll apply as a continuing student for next fall. So what should I do? I have enrolled in my classes and I'm waiting for the bill and I'm waiting to do things. Well, you can investigate what resources that you have available. So check out the finance lab, check out the library, check out the clubs, find out more information from the CMC, all these places where you can go out and I can go out and go to students. There's the business communication center, career management center, finance lab, Find out what resources are available to you so that when you get here, you kind of know what you need to do. Um, and you can build your skills. So for example, if you know that you don't have any knowledge on, on econometrics, maybe you wanna build a little skills on that before you get here. So that's that's kind of the, the whirlwind tour. Um, and we'll answer some more questions here in just a second, but at the end of the slides, which we'll send out, I do want to point out there is a semester by semester kind of breakdown of things that you could take. So your first semester, you would take at least 10, but if you wanted to go a little faster, you could pick up an extra elective. This is 10 to 13 credits. This is your second semester. This is a third semester. I did not include summers in here because the summers really you just kind of change the, the, the speed at which you do these. And just remember summer full-time is only it's only two classes. So if you take three, you're actually taking a bit of an overload. And for those of you taking the slower choice, um, this is this is kind of the last part of this. So we will send out the slides with the update for the date on there. And then the very last thing in the packet will include typical elective offerings by semester. This can vary. Um, and it can vary. Um, depending upon the faculty availability. So for example, this fall, international financial management's not, not available, but quantitative risk, which traditionally hadn't been offered very much is. So as faculty change a little bit, some of this shifts a little bit, but it gives you an idea of what's, what's typically available. Um, in terms of classes, sometimes we have new classes come on, sometimes we have old classes go. And so there's that. So let me see what else is in the chat that I have missed. Penny, what have I missed? Let me go back to the thank you slide. Looks like I missed a question about CFA level one. Can I provide a scholarship link? Yeah. There is no link to that scholarship. So what happens is Dr. Cordell handles the CFA scholarships. We send out an email to JSOM students. Usually that email is the very is towards the beginning of fall and the beginning of spring. 
requesting with information about how to apply for those scholarships. So that's that's how those work. And then you would just go through the steps that he has there. The TB test can be done, I believe, on campus. Um, those are arranged through the Student Health Center. Let me see what other, I know that was pretty quick. So let me see what specific questions folks may have for me. Okay. Can the scholarship be paid? I don't believe that can be paid in the form of a rescheduling fee. So there are some rules about, let me stop sharing this actually, actually see each other. There are some rules about that let me see what I can find out from ISSO about um, late arrivals, which we really don't encourage and they don't encourage. So, Penny, do you want to put the first day of class uh, for fall and for summer? Yeah, I will. So this is if you're going to arrive late, uh, I'll let Penny put those dates in and then I'll, I'll put in the late arrival information and she's got the student health ser services in there. So a schedule is to what an international student has to do before starting in fall 2024. So let me address that one here in just a second because I, I want to get this part in. Coursework uh, overlapping with the CFA curriculum, it covers about 70% of the body of knowledge for level one, about 50% for level two. Uh, if they live, they may live. And so then Penny's got May 28th for summer. Uh, and the fall one, I think, is August. Yeah, 19. August, August 19th for fall. So if you're going to arrive after those dates, you would need to follow the late arrival procedure um for for that course um so let's see i need to get back up here because i've missed a few what is a schedule as to what an international student has to do before starting in fall 2024 so i know that there's a number of things that you have to do for um isso for us the big one is enroll and get your documents your holds all taken care of I think they have, this is, may just be the why. I'm trying to find, yeah, so this I believe is the, I think this has most of the information that you need. Um, for the steps you need to do in terms of the, the ISSO piece. Oh, let me see. That's that one. I'm trying to see. I know I saw something about a campus job. You can get a campus job in the first semester. I believe it's up to 20 hours a week. Um, the, the jobs are posted on Handshake. Um, and so there are a couple of different kinds of jobs. So there's lots of things from dining to, you know, food services to traffic to working in the finance lab. So. Um, the holds. Hold, hold. Let me see what other questions you may have. Uh, Darcy, I, I, uh, for the handshake, I guess probably until, I guess for the new incoming students, they may access handshake until the semester starts. Is correct. My understanding? I'm not sure. Yeah. That's correct. So they're going to be okay. very limited until the semester starts in your ability to access handshake. But that's where they will be posted. And if you're wondering, yes, yeah, sometimes new students still get jobs, even though they're, you know, not in handshake until kind of towards the end. So again, big thing that you want to remember, whether you're starting uh, in, in summer or in fall, you want an accounting class and FIN 6301. And ideally, hopefully, uh, if it's fall, you want 6307 as well. So you have to understand what they'll do is because they know some of you, it takes a bit to get the transcripts here. What they do is they lift those holds to allow you to enroll without the official documents, but then they put them back, which means that if you don't, which means you can enroll for, for fall or summer, 
um, and it'll be fine. But then when you go to enroll for the next semester, you can't because it's blocked. So you can enroll, but then bring the official documents and it'll take care of it. Um, and that's that's how they handle that process for people bringing the, the physical documents. Then those get get lifted at that point. So they lift them, you enroll, they put them back, you bring the official documents that gets taken care of. In OK, campus jobs, networking is important. So there are a lot of ways to network and connect here at JSOM. We're a very engaged campus. So I'll just call out Graduate Finance Management Council. They're advisors and peer mentors. They do coffee chats. Students hang out in the finance lab. That's another place that they connect. Um, just through general living and classes, students connect that way as well. Uh, some students just go and ask and ask around. So uh, it's just ever, it's basically whatever you can do to put yourself in a position where an opportunity uh, could exist. And so again, um, when it comes to, to the networking piece, um, that sort of develops once you're here. And you can swap classes after you enroll, yes. The faculty is, is David Cordell, but he may be shifting that. It looks like he's still, he's still doing this one, but it's Dr. Cordell. Uh, so I work with Dr. Cordell as well as some of the other CFAs who are here and the CFA DFW, which is very active. Other questions? Uh, Myra, go ahead. Sorry, this may be a little long to type in the chat, but somebody mentioned okay. um, the CFA um, classes, you know, preparing for the CFA exams. What is there, you know, I, I haven't taken any CFA exams. Is there any exams that you would say, I'm sorry, any classes that you would say once you've taken that, it kind of is preparing you for the first level or how, you know, what would you all recommend in terms of preparing for the CFA exams in terms of classes? Yeah, I mean, the, the first semester when you take finance 6307, you're already starting to prepare for level one and for level two, because we had people who've completed level one who were unable to complete, um, who were unable to pass the waiver exam. They just didn't know the material for CFA level two. So it actually covers some of both of those. And I would view that as a starting point. Students also pick electives. So we're told that fixed income is kind of tricky on CFA level one. So a lot of people will take fixed income or they'll take derivatives. Uh, in order to help prepare for that information. Again, we do have a working relationship with the CFA DFW. Uh, we're trying to get that and build out a little bit more, uh, but students can join that uh, chapter and attend those events. So we have had students that have done that and that's been very um, successful in doing that. So. Thank you. Uh, there's a question about scholarships, but if you're a fall start scholar, if you're if you start in the fall, you would be an incoming student. The continuing students only get offered scholarships in the fall. So if you start in the fall and you try to apply in spring 25 as a continuing student, you can't get a scholarship. There's no scholarships for continuing students. New students, there's a few scholarships in spring, but there's no scholarships for continuing students in spring. It's, it's all in the fall. Uh, Dr. C, there's a question. Is there any event or webinars guiding us regarding starting CFA? I think we do. Sometimes I receive email from you about the CFA, some, some CFA program or. Yeah, events, well, right? we know that the CFA is having events, webinars and things like that. We put them um, out in our Monday email. So on Mondays, Penny sends out a marvelous email that talks about what's going on for the next week or so uh, so that students can get it on the radar. And that includes, for example, uh, webinars regarding the CFA. And in fact, I'm attending a CFA webinar tomorrow. So, so yes, we do that. Uh, scholarships, my understanding is Dean's Excellence for Incoming Students. It's resident tuition, and I believe it's around the $1,000. And And as far as the distribution information and how that works, that's all handled by scholarships. Um, and, and again, 
Um, I can put the link for scholarships in there. It is a yeah, separate I was application. I was okay, that's fine. I'm, I'm sitting here with it as open as well. So I think, uh, have they given 100% scholarship to anyone? I don't think so. they, it's just a in state tuition fee if for the international students or students out from other state. Yeah, not that I know mm -hmm. of. Mm -hmm. So you've accepted the offer letter and requested I 20, how to enroll in courses and selecting activities, electives. So again, the process for enrolling in, in courses is given here. And they can step you through the registration process and enrolling. JSOM Grad Advising can also help with getting you enrolled in classes. Um, the, the deadlines, really the two big deadlines, one are enrollment and you can wait to enroll if you want. They don't really care. You can enroll like the day before you get, you know, you can get here a week ahead of time and enroll. It's just your class choices will be smaller, uh, likely be smaller. Um, and paying, of course. So, the I don't know that there's a dedicated schedule that lists what everybody has to do by certain dates. I've never seen anything uh, along those lines. Um, I know one of the things after the I-20, uh, make sure you've got your visa uh, because you have to make sure that's in place. Um, and well, then how anybody do know, sorry, Thursday, I, I interrupt. Anybody know how to apply for I-20? You the need I to go through. Yeah, I will I put a link over here, the iComet. Uh yeah, yeah iComet the, link. That's the iComet link, but it looks like this person has requested the I-20 already. And I think the next step after the I-20 is the visa. I just don't know the dates for any or the deadlines for any of those things because they kind of move in their own power. Um as far as choosing your track, it's based on your career goals. So if you're trying to figure out what track you want, um it's if I wanted to be a CFA, do investment analysis, then I would pick that track. Um, but if you want some more help in figuring out what it is you want to do, uh, you may find this information to be um, helpful. So and again, you don't have to choose your track right away unless, you know, unless you're picking up electives, then it's a little bit trickier because you have to do that. And how many days will classes be full? What is the standard time to enroll? Depends on the course. There are some courses that will be full very quickly and others that will fill far more slowly. There should be plenty of sections for you guys though, because the continuing students won't be signing up for those um, classes that you're signing up for. The cohort and flex do not have the same schedule. The cohort program is an entirely, it's a full-time daytime program. They do their own enrollment. So if you do the cohort program, most of this won't apply to you. They have their own everything. So you would need to reach out to the cohort. If you're starting in fall 2024, the first day of classes is um, August 19th. So you need to arrive by August 18th, I believe. It's the day before. I, would I recommend arriving August 18th? Probably not, because that gives you zero days to get ready for your classes. You basically land, have jet lag, and go to class. So um, I generally they say a week or two ahead of time. So it gives you a chance to settle in. And I think they probably they, they also they have to attend the orientation. Uh, yeah, they do. Yeah. They're supposed to. Yeah. Supposed to yes. and do aren't always the same, but you're supposed to attend orientation, which is helpful because I go through several things you need to know. Uh, do classes get filled? Sometimes the classes will get filled if you enroll late. Um, the biggest headache you have for if they get filled is you might have to take a different section. If all the sections get filled, then we, you know, I work with the people that do scheduling. You will get the classes you need. The only one that's tough is electives, but you'll get the core classes for sure. And then the electives, you may just not get your first choice. Do you need two I-20 application for, I have no idea, Catherine. I'm afraid that's a question about visas and I'm not sure, I have no idea. 
the orientation so for, is yeah go ahead for the uh, the f1 and f2 you need to reach out to the iso so inside your i commit portal there's a message box and then through that box you, you can leave the message to the advisor and then they will see your message in the i commit portal and then they, they will reply to you how to apply for f2 if you need uh, apply for for uh, for f2 for someone else the question yeah. was when is orientation and i don't know that they've told us yet when it no. will be but it's usually sometime around august i'd say right around august 14th is usually orientation um I, so i don't but i don't know the exact date uh if you join classes late you have to go through the process if you're on a visa you have to go through the process of late arrival um and you're certainly welcome to take 12 credits in the fall. Again, we focus on the, the nine credits that you absolutely need to have. And then if you want to pick up an elective, you can reach out to Penny or I, and we can help you. Uh, classes are generally scheduled in the evening, but there are some that are in the afternoon and there are a few in the morning. A lot of our students are working professionals, so they come and take classes in the evening. So you will find a lot of evening classes starting at either four or seven for the FLEX program. You can complete the program in two years with a slow pace. Uh, if you want, yes. Yeah, so if you want to reach out to us regarding electives, the best way is msfinance at utdallas.edu. Uh, in some cases, different sections have different teachers. In other cases, different sections have the same teacher. It just depends on the course. So for example, Dr. Ma teaches both sections of Finance 6307. Uh, but I believe there are two different instructors for finance 6301. And that's also true. So those are both core courses. So core courses can have the same or different instructors. Um, but some courses typically have the same instructor. So for example, in electives, there's really only one person who's doing some of those. So Oh, let's see, what is the average class the size? They they cap them at 50, but most of the classes probably aren't quite that large. So I would say anywhere from the 30 to 50 range. Um, some will be much smaller if it's an elective, 15, 20, but they really don't get much larger, at least for finance. Uh, the difference between a core course and elective is spelled out in the graduate catalog. So, and that's the best place to get that piece of data. Turn that off. And so let me pull up I the graduate. The core course, basically everyone should take, but for the elective, then depending on your track. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, uh, yeah, go ahead. You want to take the chat and I'll take fatigue. Yeah, Go so ahead. I will put the link over here on how to register the courses. I think the 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 advising office they have this uh, registration link. Uh, yeah, a demo. Yeah, yeah, I I put that in there a couple of times. So Pratik, go ahead. Ma'am, uh, I had uh, attempted CFA level one some four years ago. I had failed, and I'm not, I'm now thinking of writing CFA level one in November. So, ma'am, uh, can I just end the deadline for registering? It is, I think, so April 17th. So, can I avail some any form of scholarship if there is, if uh, because I will be enrolling in MS in Finance to UT Dallas? So, is there any scholarship, student scholarship, or something like that? So, for incoming students for scholarships for the CFA, I think you have to wait to apply for those scholarships until you get here. So if there was a, you had mentioned one Mr. David. So can I write a mail to him and ask him directly what is the situation and how can I handle this? You because can ask him. Uh, yeah, so you, you can ask him. So I put the core courses here in the, in the chat, uh, but you can ask Dr. Cordell, but what he's probably going to say is you need to be um, an enrolled student and here at UTD just because we want to make sure we don't give you a scholarship and then you decide not to come to UTD, even though you're coming to UTD. Um, but uh, uh, but you can you certainly know, ask Dr. The problem is that uh, the, the next attempt will be February and the deadline for February is also earlier than my enrolling in UTD. So that is, that is the biggest pain in doing this. 
So what would happen in that particular case is you get the scholarship and the scholarship, I think, let's, gives you some flexibility after you get the scholarship as to when you enroll to take that exam. So if you got the scholarship in the fall, you could enroll to take it in February. It's my understanding. No, ma'am, actually what uh, means I'm saying is that uh, the February deadline for registration is also before I will enroll in UT Dallas. That is what I think. It, I think it is August 10 or uh, July, something like that. So I will miss the February one also, then I will have to go directly for May. So that is what I was asking. And at the end of the day, if the situation arises that I am unable to get the scholarship itself, then I would have lost two attempts. So that is something that I want to talk about with someone who has, who knows a lot about this issue that uh, if I if I want the scholarship, what is the process? And not only so, that, what are my chances of getting the scholarship? If the chance is zero, then why will I wait for it? So that is something that. I okay, so I will answer at least some of this because I know. So the deal is you cannot register for the exam at all until you have the scholarship. If you have registered for the exam, because the scholarship is based on the idea that you don't have the funds to pay for the, the level one exam, and it's only for level one. I don't remember if you can get a scholarship if you've already taken level one once before. There's some rules that are attached to that, and I would have to look up what those are. Um, so, and what ends up happening is because students end up signing up late for the exam, the late fee for people who get scholarship, I believe, is waived. So it's a, an interesting little dance as to how that one works. So, ma'am, uh, means uh, when should I talk to you regarding this? When should I remind you? So you should probably reach out. You can reach out to me anytime that you would like through MS Finance, and I can check with Dr. Cordell. And I can pull up the old information because it has all the rules. I just don't remember the rules for the scholarship off the top of my head. Okay, so I'll write down you a mail right now after this. Okay, that will be just fine. Okay. This was the only question I had. That sounds that sounds great. I do have someone who asked for a general specimen schedule. I'm not sure what you mean by a specimen schedule. Um, but let's just think, say uh, you missed that an ideal and average uh, a schedule what a typical student should follow. An ideal is the, schedule. So is the semester by semester schedule? Is if yeah. it's that and now I can I can email out when I send out the, the, the recording. The, the recording link, yeah. I can share that. Yeah, one. so that document is going to get shared with you. Um, so you will get that. Let me go towards the end here. So I go right by it. Yes. So if you look at at this, this is this would be your schedule for the first semester. We don't tell you which sections to take. It's just these are the courses you would want to take, and I need to add accounting 6330 on here as well. So but we'll we'll get this sent out to you guys, so you will have it uh, when we get through with the web conference here. The timings and dates of the classes are in Galaxy Orion, um, as well as in... Um, Cosbook. I will share the Cosbook, yeah. All right, so we're just about out of time for our webinar today, so I think I have time for one more question. The only compulsory class that's a program prereq is that MAS 6102. If you get a notice from us that you need statistics or calculus, then what you need to do is, is if you've had them, you need to show us which class it is, because sometimes they'll label them as math one, two, three, and four, so we don't know which one it is. Um, or you'll need to take them in your first semester. And if you need help with scheduling on that part, please just let us know. So inquiries for Penny and I would be things like what classes should we take, what track, uh, career questions, questions uh, for advising, or can you please enroll me? Uh, or I have a hold. Holds should really be directed to whoever placed the hold. Um, but if it's an advising hold, those those holds come from them. 
uh, don't say, I think yeah. probably I can take care of this. Then okay. if you want to go, yeah, I, I, so I can answer questions. So I want to thank you all for joining us today. I look mm -hmm. forward to seeing you in the fall. And I'm going to let Penny finish up with any last classes that, uh, or last questions that you guys have. So thank yeah. you very much. Bye bye. Okay. In class. Thank you. Uh, yeah, because uh, Thursday you have another webinar because we have to, today we have the current students webinar. So I will take care of here. Um, <clears throat> so can we take? Uh, let me just uh, answer the question. Can we take the prerequisites even after someone is waived? Yes, you can. So if you want to polish your, for example, uh, statistics, then you want to refresh your memory. Then yes, uh, yes you can. The number is. OPRE OPRE six three zero one. So I I hope uh, I answer your question. So how do we know if we have any hold? So you if you check your Galaxy portal, you go inside your Galaxy portal. You log in, use your UTD credential. Then you can say on the right side. Then you can say if you have hold. And then if you have hold, and then right now, uh, basically for the enrollment, uh, the advising office will remove all the holds to help all. Of all of you to enroll. But if you still have that hold, then I think we have the advising office email. And then I, I will put over here again. Uh, in that way, you can email to advising office request get the hold removed. So I will put the email over here again. So I'm not sure if any, anybody has still have any conf confusion over here. I because I saw the the question, the, the, the chat box, someone still confusion. Uh, if he, I, I know. So yeah, there's too many policies and then too many departments. Uh, maybe we got inverse courses to look for. So, okay. And then, so for the, uh, yes, we send out the email. Um, because right now, everybody know we are going, uh, it's kind of AI trends. AI is a kind of a very, very popular words. Um, and we use R. For several courses, for example, like uh, 6307 and uh, 6, uh, 6, uh, 6, 3, 18. And also for certain courses, we use Python. So for this one, yes, you don't have to because during the class, the, the professor will teach you hand by hand. But if you want to, you know, learn by yourself in advance, probably you can better prepare yourself for the courses. So that's why we give this email to all of you suggesting you if you want to you know, learn some R or Python advanced, of course, it's a, it's a very good way. Because some of the students ask us, hey, can we learn before you we join the, 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 the class or the semester? Yes, of course, it would be very helpful if you if you want to learn uh, in advance. For pro professional, so for, uh, for the professional development course, which is a prerequisite, it's one credit hour. Yes, you should pay one credit hour tuition fee um we can choose from if you go i think i put the the course oh uh, the the just now i think i put the course over here <clears throat> the degree degree link uh you can see we have five tracks um anybody can help me you teach um I think I put the 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 curriculum in the in the chat box. Then if you go, I can share the uh, screen with with you all. I know some of you, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> attended my information session before. <clears throat> I remember I talked to uh, Pratik uh, previously. So yeah, can you hear the the share? Uh, can you see the yes? So if you if you scroll down, I will say yes, this right. one. I will share this link with all of you. Now, also the same as here. If you go this track, you can see here is a financial analyst, corporate finance, com commercial real estate, fintech, and a financial management. So that's the courses you can. That the, that's the tracks you can uh, choose the electives. So because under each track, we put the suggest the courses, uh, for you to think about, for you to choose. Oh, uh, that's the track. Yes, I put the link over here. <clears throat> um, so if you go financial management, 
basically we list down all the electives under this track. And then you can choose whatever you want. And then only six electives from under the track, because if if you look at the core course, everybody should take this core course, core courses, which is 18 uh, semester uh, uh, credit hours. So for the rest, 18 semester hours should be come from should come from your electives. So under each of the track, we list down the electives for you to choose from. Um, and then I know some some of you probably uh, let me see. Do you have any any questions? Maybe um, Pratik, do you have still any question? Because you 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 put up your hands. If you don't have any question, then you, you may yeah put down your hand. <clears throat> yeah. So for the uh, confusion just now, I in in my understanding based on my reading of all the quest, uh, all the questions, probably you you're still wondering why if you can enroll courses. Hold on. Uh, if you can enroll co courses before you pay money, before you get the I-20. Yes, you can at this moment. Uh, because we we want to say, uh, since we have these courses pro to, to provide uh, to the students, we don't want you to, to be late, number one. Now, we don't want you to be put in wait list. So we want you to enroll uh, successfully. But once, of course, then the school and SSO will help you get the I-20. And then, then the rest is visa, visa issue. Then that's probably it's beyond school's capability. That's how you interview with your uh, visa advisor uh, or visa officer. Then the rest way is because some of you probably wish to enroll nine credit hours. Some of you wish to enroll 12 credit hours. So that's why at this moment we don't want you to pay because the payment based on how many credit, credit hours you are going to in, enroll. Like nine credit hours, total, the, the, the tuition for nine credit hours is completely different from the credit, uh, tuition for 12 credit hours. So that's why we want you to enroll courses based on your credit hours, and then we will give you the payment uh, you know, notification. So probably I think the, the school will send you the, the payment email uh, in early August or late July. So if, if by that time you will know how much money you, you need to pay for your first semester study. So we don't ask you to pay for whole program. We ask for your payment for each semester. Yeah, I hope you understand this. So um, yes, so I know some some of some of the students already put over here. So your payment is until July, late uh, uh, July or August. Uh, it's de depending on, on school. So yeah, I think uh, Yash put uh, July 15 over here. Uh, this one, you, you talk about CFA level one. For our for our uh, track, financial analyst track, the program, the, this track, I think you can see over here, right? Uh, we prepare 70%, 70% 70 for level one. Uh, 30 or 40 percent for level two. So basically that's the um, of course you still like our students most many of the, our students also taking the courses right now and then concurrently preparing their CFA level one or level two some of them prepare for level three. So yes that's he hectic but they can still manage that depending on how you manage your time. Uh, since we we have this uh, courses, we some of the courses prepare you for safe aid level one and level two, and of course you may want to buy some books uh, to help you uh, beef up your your uh, your your skills or your strategy uh, for the exam. In uh, finish our, I don't really understand what if you miss enrolling. You cannot miss enrolling because for the international students, you have to enroll. Then if you don't enroll, then you basically, okay, there are two scenarios. If you are domestic students, you have to enroll in your first semester. But after that, you can choose not enroll for one or two semesters. But if you are international students, you have to enroll because you are you are working, uh, you are studying as a full-time student. You have to enroll. It's based on the U U.S. Homeland Security Law. If you finish, you don't have to finish the core course courses first, then to follow up with your elective. So you only your first semester, yes, 
you have to take the core courses because it's kind of a preparation semester. But after your first semester, you can spread out your courses in the rest of the semester, which means starting your second semester, you can kind of have a combination, one core course plus two electives or two courses plus one electives. So it's de de depending on how you manage or how you, what's your career goal. I'm on meeting. Uh, just give me one moment. I'm on meeting. So, um, trans, trans, can we? I mean, your your uh uh practice. You talk about the transcript. You mean the 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 official transcript? Is what you may mention? Uh, yes, if for uh, the actually uh, we have uh, when we enrolled, we submitted the copies. Now, when there was an uh, oh, webinar for all the students admitted in that, they said that uh, you can submit the transcripts when you come, but it should be in sealed envelope and stamped. Now, one of my, as you know, I have done undergrad and MBA. So my undergraduate institution, I have transcript from sealed, but uh, my okay. MBA institute has not given sealed transcript. They have uh send uh, the stamped uh, the transcript uh, xerox copy yeah. on it they stamped okay, the institute so and they have said that whatever they what you tell us wants to ask they can ask directly because i am uh, i have been a student and they will verify whatever they want so it's, i just wanted to know so can we submit the transcript in a normal envelope instead of stamping because they are not doing stamping so okay so. later uh, yeah i will i will i will hold your question so your transcript, if for the official transcript, yes, you can come and submit. Then you you bring your 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 official one to the UTD registrar office, not to us, to the registrar office. Um, how many average hours they enroll? So for the if you enroll three courses, which means you come to school, you three sessions, one session per class, a uh, per course per week. Each session is three hours. So if you if you enroll three courses, for example, uh, yeah, then you you have three sessions every week. Um, it sounds it sounds very you know manageable, right? It's not. So even though you for each course you you only come to school three hours per week, in total nine hours, right? But you have a lot of e exam and quizzes. So that's the yeah three hours per session, yeah, and then per course. Uh, depending on depending on um how many courses you enroll. If you four courses and then four sessions, so one session per course, and then three hours per session. Is there any option to submit transcript? Of yes. So if you can either if you look at the how to submit official official documents, you can either use an electronic platform or you 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 just hand carry. You just use your you 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 carry by yourself, and then you personally you produce this official uh, official documents to the registrar office and UTD. Uh, for Kevin scholarship. So if you you may check the policies in the link I <clears throat> I share with all of you. So basically, they will look at your GPA. Look at your uh, official GMAT or GRE score. Yes, official GMAT or GRE score is required. So, and then also, of course, they will look at your resume. It's kind of a holistic, holistic review. But if you get waived, when you admit it, if you, you, you get ad admitted. However, you, 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 uh, also get waived from your GMAT GRE score. If you wanna apply for this scholarship, yes, you have to submit. Official GRE or GMAT score. Maximum, I think that's the same question we we just answered just now. Uh, maximum six courses. But uh, for for some of the students, even three courses or four courses is very heavy loaded. So we normally we own, we don't encourage students to take six courses. Probably four courses would be maximum. 
um, it's quite heavy loaded. And also for the students, we always encourage them if once you start your program, you should start looking for internship. So that would be very busy. And then on campus, we have a lot of workshops and events to help you to get a job or prepare for the job. So you'll be very busy if you really want to get a job or internship. Uh, there's so many events for you to, to, to join and there's so many resources for you to explore and then, or for you to improve yourself. So for this one, um, for the you have already applied for scholarship. So for this one, you have to check your 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 uh, scholarship portal. So because it's not uh, for program office. Um, for the scholarship, for the face value is one thousand. But if you are an international student, if you can get this one thousand scholarship, you will be eligible for in for in state tuition fee. So which which is fifty about fifty percent less than out of state or international students tuition fee. So that's the it's a huge financial uh financial burden relief. So yes, and then if you want to say your scholarship and then you check it, just check your scholarship portal and see when it will be released. Oh, uh, hold on. Can I get a scholarship without? Oh, uh, sorry. If you cannot, if you don't, so this one is for the scholarship scholarship committee. They require GMAT or GRE score. It's not from program office. So they require official GRE or GMAT score. For the scholarship, yeah, it's the Dean's Excellence for Low Income Students Scholarship. Because you are you are you are not current. You are you are new incoming students. So you, you should look at look at the new incoming students scholarship. Yeah. So uh for the transcript for this one uh project, I I would suggest you to talk to advising office. I, we share the advising office email over here you just let them know your situation and then say what's the what's the solution or what's the advice from them uh regarding your transcript submission you paid if you get the scholarship you get you pay in-state tuition fee so which means you only you pay like a texas resident and then which is 50 percent less than non-resident. And then also because for in, no, if you are from California or if you are from other country, it call all call long Texas resident. So the tuition fee, if for the in-state tuition fee is 50% less. Yeah. Enrollment is April 4th. In-state tuition fee is around, uh, 30 less than 35,000 for the whole program for instead instead tuition fee. Yes, that's for the new incoming students. So that's all you should apply for, not for current students. I don't really understand what it is with deadline. So for the program application is May 1st, and then for the scholarship application is May 1st as well. And then for the enrollment is April 4th. For the course enrollment is April 4th. Online class and in-person class are the same day. There's no any Online class, if you go uh go your guard portal or no, go your let me see possible.
So for the scholarship application, that line is made first. Um, if you want to know what is online, what is in person, let's. I think I think you still can see this. Okay, if you go this one, O W one, O W one, all means online. The otherwise in person. But uh, like I would have to highlight for domestic students, you can choose whole online courses. But for domestic, uh, for international students, you can choose only one online courses out of three courses. So which means if you enroll three courses for four semester, you have you only can enroll one as online course. But for summer, if you want to enroll two courses, you still have you 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 have one online course for you to consider and then the rest has to be in person april 4th is starting day for enroll but like what we mentioned earlier is better otherwise some courses will be full and then you may have to you may have to be put in the wait list and then you until we have seats available for you to enroll. Okay, so do you have any other questions? Uh, yeah. If we, if we don't, Uh, I will end over here. I will end the the stop the recording. Stop.